How do you hook a director on page one and keep them reading? Today's film, we're going to talk to Peter Lydon, who has directed an absolute ton of high-end British television. Shows like Shameless, Poirot, and A Diary of a Cool Girl. And Peter also has a rather nice sideline, directing massive Hollywood superstars in top-of-the-range commercials. And I think that his takeaways here will be very helpful and eye-opening to all of us. When I get a script, even if I don't plan to read it at that moment, I will always want to take a little peek because you're thinking, is this it? Is this what I'm looking for? Please be great. If I'm faced with a huge amount of description up front, it can be very off-putting. It's like you have a little snapshot of the page and you see these shapes, you see the shape of a paragraph or the size of a paragraph, and then you see a bit of dialogue. And you really want that first bit of dialogue to be not too far down the page because it's the dialogue that's going to, you're going to hear that dialogue and you're going to imagine that character and you're going to want that character to completely sort of connect with you. Whatever that kind of slab of description, it's got to really work tight and hard to deliver you to that first piece of dialogue. That dialogue is critical. Nine times out of 10, whatever your opening dialogue is, change it. <laughs> As in keep trying different things. Don't settle, go against your instincts, put something very strange, very different, very funny. People are always asking me if I know Tyler Durden. Three minutes. If somebody's hanging off a building by their fingertips, instead of them shouting help, you know, they, they might shout, make mine a double. Just surprise yourself, because actually what you're doing by doing that is you're making your reader sit up and go, oh, that came out of nowhere. What you're looking for right from the get-go when you read that first, you know, um, opening description or scene setting is, do I want to make this? Am I going to read something that I'm going to immediately start to see in my head? You know, are they going to paint those pictures? They're going to pull me in. So it needs to be cinematic. We use this word cinematic, and I think that that can mean different things. It doesn't necessarily mean opening on a big wide plane and the sun burning. It can be opening tight on someone's eyes, it can be a very intimate and small scene, but it has to have kind of visceral quality that's tight. There's always a debate about how much information to put in terms of what the camera is doing, the eye of the viewer, if you like. My main thing would be to say, don't talk about lenses or camera angles. Don't use film language. Use your own language and keep it descriptive in, in your own words. You don't necessarily say we, we begin close up on a hand holding a gun. In the same way that a novel wouldn't say use those words, what would the novel say? A gun sits on a closet, a hand reaches for it. It's describing something that could be filmic without it, be, without it being overtly filmic in terms of its choice of words. You want to yeah, play yeah. the movie in the head of the reader. And mm -hmm. anything yes. that you put in that becomes too instruction manually or left mm -hmm. brain will interrupt the movie. This is the story you want to tell. And you've got to tell it with passion for, for every single line. Every single line's got to kind of earn its place from your point of view. And then it will ideally earn its place from the, view, the reader's point of view. I think a lot of writers' third drafts look like vomit drafts. You should allow yourself to spend an enormous amount of time on the first few pages. My thing is, write fast and then slow the fuck down and start spending a ton of time on every moment, because that's where the work goes. The writer has to be very clear uh, in terms of throwing you that first piece of meat or sugar, sometimes I call it. So we're going to call these sugar cubes. <laughs> Ideally, you want a sugar cube on the first half page. It can be a visual, it can be a character situation. You want to very quickly feel like your main character is at the heart of this story. And you very quickly get their attitude, their tone of voice. That character is going to be the thing that pulls you through. Whoever they are, whether they're an anti-hero or a hero, they're going to be your lifeline. 
what would you say are the, some of the red flags on the first page that immediately signal to you that you're dealing with an amateur or somebody who's not a proficient storyteller? Too much description, descriptions of things that you're not really interested in, too much information about the weather or the sort of furniture or things that are sort of filler. Why am I looking at things that aren't important to the story? I want to be, get pulled in straight away. Someone like Peter, if he sees you're overwriting, he's going to start skimming. And that's like handing him the remote control. And you're no longer in control of the narrative that he is. When do you skim, Peter? When the, the, the story is treading water. It feels like it's treading water and not sort of propelling you forwards. Things have to happen. Something the character does mm. or says, an action that makes you think, oh, I'm excited by this character and what they're doing right now. It's a sugar cube. They're not just walking down the street and opening the door and going in and making a cup of tea. And you know, it's got to light up straight away. Billy Wilder's remark that you've got to grab the audience by the throat and not let go is truer now than mm. it never has been before. I watch a lot of Wilder or noir films, old comedies, and you can learn a lot from those films because they hit the ground running so quickly and they move so quickly. If you look at something like His Girl Friday, it, it begins in a newspaper room and characters like Cary Grant, Rosin Russell, they sort of burst in the room and they start talking to each other 10 to the dozen. And there's so much information they're giving you about the characters. You just think, wow, did people listen faster then? Or was it just the writing? I see you're still at it. Uh, first time I ever double crossed the governor. What can I do for you? Well, would you mind if I sat down? There's been a lamp burning in the window for you, honey. Here. Oh, I jumped out that window a long time ago. <laughs> what those stories did very quickly was set up the stakes after about two pages you kind of thought i know what the stakes are here i know what that character has to lose and gain but it's done with such a light touch in terms of the dialogue and you just go up oh, that's great you just sit back you want to kind of sit back and give yourself to the writer and go okay this is good i'm with you i'm on your side and then what happens is that it's a sort of it's a constantly evolving relationship because Sometimes they might drop the ball. You're reading something and you love the world and you love the characters and you love the setup. And then after about five pages, you think, oh, this is actually not going where I thought it was. I'll give you an example, John Wick. John Wick has these brilliant setups and these wonderful sequences, but actually it really fucking treads water as far as I'm concerned and the story just falls apart. But somehow they've kind of earned this adrenaline rush that keeps you going. There's an element of sleight of hand that makes you think it makes more sense than it does. But to do that, they've got to actually start by putting petrol in the tank. Another red flag would be where you read the log line or you've read the log line at some point and then the script is exactly as you expect. It's not taking that idea and giving it a, a spin, or it's not taking you into the idea from a surprising angle. That's what you're looking for. I'm really happy to see something I recognize and I can engage with, but I want to, and, and that, that may actually be kind of borrowing from a tradition, but I want to see it covering its tracks. If it's not covering its tracks, if it's not actually serving up that dish fresh, but cold, then uh, it loses me. When we talk about Die Hard, we think about a action adventure in a tower. But actually, it starts on an incredibly human scale. I missed you. I guess you didn't miss my name, though, huh? Except maybe when you're signing checks. And paints a picture of a, a very real and fallible man on a journey that's going to get really out of control and almost unbelievable but it begins grounded. Good job. Very mature. Show us something new under the sun. Show us something surprising. Hook us into Ooh. a character. It may not be an action beat. And write like hell. Mm. And edit like hell. Mm. And then you might be in with a shot with a director like Peter, who, when he gets your script, saying, OK, I can see this. Script fella, out. Probably.